Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Zion Freedom Fellowship live stream on this Sunday morning in October. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised, is he not? I'm alive because he lives. Amen, amen, amen. I live because he lives in me, and I have the life of God in me. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, thank you for joining us on this wonderful and beautiful Sunday morning. We are very blessed to be here. And I have a really good word and a message for everyone this day. Whether you're watching today live with us or whether you are watching another day of the week, another day of the month or another day of the year, I pray that this message blesses you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever even ask or think according to his power which is working in us those of us who are believers we have the power of god working in us and we live because he lives in us amen the life of god you know brothers and sisters when we sit at the communion table and we eat the body and the blood of jesus christ we have life in us. The scripture tells us if we don't eat the flesh and drink the blood of the son of man, we have no life in us. So praise be to God. I am so happy that you're all here with us this morning. We've been having technical issues with my particular uh, uh, laptop. It's been running very, very, very slow. So thank you guys. Um, for keeping us in prayer. I'm actually on Nathan's laptop today and had to call our technical support system, uh, Ryan down in Florida and get him to help get logged in. So thank you so much everybody for your patience this morning. We usually like to start at about 1030 sharp, but we were a few minutes late getting started. Praise be to God. Well, the title of today's message is The Lord is Our Refuge. Amen. And like I said a few minutes ago, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've invited him into your heart to live and dwell on the inside of you, then you've been born again. You have been born again by the Spirit of God, and you've got new life in you. And Jesus said, for this reason, I've come into the world to not condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. So those of you that are listening that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray with you when the live stream ends. And I believe with all my heart that you will be born again. We've gotten many testimonies from all over the world, people emailing our, um, our website and also leaving messages and prayer requests. So we are very grateful for all those prayer requests, and I pray over them. So thank you so very much. I don't always have time to answer every person, but I try to do my best. So thank you so very much. God is wonderful. He's worthy to be praised, and you and I shall be saved from our enemies. Amen. Well, let's pray over the message. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the word of God today. Let your word be like a sharp two-edged sword that goes out of my mouth today, Lord God. Father, you have anointed me and you have called me and chosen me to speak your word. And Lord, I thank you that your word is in my mouth. You have put your word there. So Lord, I ask that I speak by the anointing of the spirit of God and that the word of God will be like water. The water from heaven comes out of my mouth and will cleanse those that are listening. May you drink from the Lord and may your thirst be satisfied today. We pray all these things in the wonderful, most precious and most holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So once again, welcome. Thank you so much. And again, the title of the message today is The Lord is Our Refuge. Let's turn to Psalm 28. Psalm 28. 
And we are going to start with verse 7. Psalm 28, verse 7. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. The Lord is my strength and my shield. So the Lord is a strength and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he up, uh, withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's another scripture. And praise be to God, this one says the same thing. David writes, the Lord is my strength and my shield. You know, David trusted in the Lord with all his heart. He had a very intimate personal relationship with the Lord. He knew God in his glory. He understood what it was to be intimate with the Lord. Even during times of repentance, which we know David had gotten into trouble on many occasions, he repented with his whole heart before the Lord. He laid before the Lord and fasted and prayed and wept before the Lord. You and I need to allow our soulish nature to be conquered by the Spirit of God so that you and I can dwell in the presence of God. We are welcomed into his presence. He sees us clean through the blood of his son, Jesus, and he welcomes us into his presence. When you get born again and you ask the Lord to forgive you for all of your sins, for all of your iniquities, the blood of Jesus cleanses you. And he can then come and live on the inside of you because you are now clean and holy for him to live in your spirit. Praise be to God. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. You know, rejoicing is such an important part of being victorious in the Lord. When we rejoice and we welcome his presence, his presence will fill the atmosphere around us and you and I will dwell in the presence of God. Not only do we have the presence of God within us and we can release that presence no matter where we're where we are, whether we're at we're work on a construction site, no matter if we're hanging off the iron of a beam way up high in the sky, building a building. I used to know a pastor that worked for um, Local 16 down in Baltimore, and he used to walk the iron. And boy, what an art that was. But praise God, he trusted in the Lord and he had never fallen or gotten hurt. So God is so good. God is so good. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. Have you ever sung a new song unto the Lord? Now, I'm not the greatest singer in the world, but sometimes I'll sit in my room and I'll just start singing to the Lord. The Lord will just give me a new song to worship him with. Now, it might not sound great to human ears, but by the time it gets to heaven, it sounds beautiful to the Lord. Isn't that great? Praise God. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge. There's that word refuge that we want to focus on. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. So I have a question for you today. Do you know how? Well, let me say this. Do you know how to make the Lord your refuge? Do you know how to make him your dwelling place? All right, let's turn to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. And we are going to look at verses 1, 7, and 11. All right, verse one in Psalm chapter 46 says, God is our refuge and our strength. God, Yahweh, Abba Father is our strength and our refuge, praise be to God. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Hallelujah. Did you catch it? 
Therefore, we will not fear. I refuse to be afraid. Yes, fear tries to creep up upon me on many occasions. You know, when I found out that I had a wound on my right foot, it scared me at first. But I set my mind on the Lord. I'm learning how not to receive fear from the enemy. Why? Because 2 Timothy 1.7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. So we have a spirit of authority. And if we walk in the authority of the name of Jesus, you and I will not be afraid. We will not be afraid. You know, the enemy uses the fear tactics. Right now, there is so much fear in the world. Fear is a terrible enemy of God. It's an enemy of God's faith in us. It will work to destroy us. So don't give place. In fact, say this with me right now. Say, Lord God, I refuse in the name of Jesus to give place or to allow a spirit of fear to work in my mind and in my soul, I will tremble and fear before the Lord only. Amen. You and I will only tremble and fear before the Lord. The fear of God is not the kind of fear. It's a reverential fear. It's not a fear like, oh, I got to be afraid. of No, because of the blood. You don't have to be afraid to come into God's presence. You are welcome. You're welcome. He welcomes you into the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake, with its swelling. And then he says, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. You know, God's never late. He's always on time. We and you and I have to learn how to trust God's timing. Amen. God's timing is perfect. And sometimes you think, eh, you know, is the Lord going to come through for me? He always comes through. He always comes through for you and for me. Why? Because he loves us. Praise God. God shall help, help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. You know, God is a peacemaker. Je Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, he is the Messiah. He's our Messiah. And praise be to God, he is also called the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. So you should have peace. You know, peace will settle your mind. It'll cause your stomach to be at peace. You know, sometimes I feel fear right down in my gut, literally right in my stomach. And it can make your whole body to clench up. But when you have Jesus, the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, li living within you, you'll sense God's everlasting peace. Praise be to God. There will be no more wars in heaven. No more pain, no more sorrow. No more devastation, no more amputations, no more kidney disease, 
no more eye problems. Praise be to God. You and I will have a new body in heaven. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful to think about? It makes me happy. Praise be to God. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know. How can you be still? Because Jesus is the Sar Shalom and you will be still. Sometimes it's good just to take a deep breath and just say, Lord, I worship you. I cast all my cares on you. I will not be moved. Say and pray what the scripture says about you. I will be exalted. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, Jacob, is our refuge. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Blessed be the name of Jesus. God is so good. He is so good. Let's go to Psalm 48. Psalm 48. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And let's look at, I'm going to start reading in verse one. Why not, right? Every word of God is good. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. We used to sing this song back in um, Bay Area when I first got saved under uh, Pastor Richard O'Wellen. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. So you can turn the Psalms into a song. That's what they are. David used to sing these Psalms to the Lord and the presence of God would fall upon him. Hallelujah. He is known as her refuge. For behold, the kings assembled, they passed by together, they saw it and they marveled. They were troubled, they hastened or moved away quickly. Fear took hold of them there and pain as a woman in birth pangs. So, you know, folks, people in the world and our enemies, Spiritual enemies fear the Lord. They fear the Lord. Satan and his dominion knows what is coming. He knows that his time is short. That is why the attack right now is great. The attack from the enemy is great and God is allowing us to be tested. So choose. I will not be moved. I will not be moved. Hallelujah. Ooh, I feel God's presence. Amen. I hope you do too. Praise be to God. All right, let's go to Psalm 71. Psalm 71. We're skipping through the Psalms today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we are going to look All right, let's look at verse seven. I have become as a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. I have become a wonder to many. Now, let me let me let me talk about that for just a minute. I think it's very interesting that often we think about what people think about us. We think how people feel about us, but we should not be moved by that. 
because you might appear a wonder to many and they may wonder about well, why is this person going through so much? How come that person hasn't been healed yet? Oh, they must have something wrong in their life. There must be some kind of sin that they've committed that these terrible things, you know what, brothers and sisters, that is wrong. We are in a severe time of testing right now. The Lord is trying us. David said, try me and know my works and purify my heart. So we're tried by the Lord and we need to be concerned about what he thinks about us, not what others think about us. That's powerful. That is so powerful. Get your mind off of people. Don't be concerned about what people think, but be concerned what the Lord has to say about you. And you are well-pleasing in his sight, beloved. He loves you so much. Oh, let him wrap his arms around you. Daddy Father has big arms. He has big arms. You know, I choose to trust in the Lord for underneath are the everlasting arms. His arms are everlasting. He will not drop you. He will not forsake you. He will not fail you. God is not like a man that he can lie. He can't lie. His word is truth. Jesus said every jot and every tittle of the law will be fulfilled. And Jesus fulfilled the law for us. And he gave us his gift of righteousness so that you and I can be in the presence of God forever. Isn't that great? That is awesome. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Psalm 94. Psalm 94. And we're going to look at verse 22. Actually, let me go back just a little bit, folks. Let's look at verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity which devises evil by law. Now, boy, this, I tell you guys, I don't mean to get off track here, but this reminds me of our government right now and all the critical, all the um, lies that are coming out of our government. You know, we are not stupid. We're not dumb. We're not stupid. But so many of these laws are manufactured by evil. And he says, shall the throne of iniquity, which devises evil through the laws that it makes, have fellowship with you? They gather together against the life of the righteous. See, that's the point. That's the point right there. Right now, our government's at a place where they want to move God out. You know, I heard a man talking a couple days ago. And he says, if you think that you can stop God and his word, you are a fool. You're a fool because God cannot be stopped. He will not be moved. You cannot push God and his word out of the way. Look at through history, how many people have tried to get rid of the word of God. Were they ever successful? No, no, they were not. And they will not be successful. No one will move the Lord out of the way. Praise be to God. All right. They gather together against the life of the righteous and they condemn innocent blood. But the Lord has been my defensive defense. The Lord, the Lord is my defense and my God the rock of my refuge. He has brought on them their own iniquity. Think about that. 
he has brought on them their own iniquity. You know how you throw a boomerang and it'll come back? Well, that's what iniquity and sin is. It's like a boomerang. It'll come back and it'll, it will slay you. And that's what the word of God says, that the law slew us. Paul said that. So you and I are made alive by the resurrection power. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead now lives and dwells in us. Death, iniquity, sin, unrighteousness, no weapon of the enemy against us shall ever prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He has brought on them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. The Lord our God shall cut them off. Whew. Well, I tell you what, you're the favorite of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Listen to me. You are the favored of the Lord. His favor surrounds you like a shield and you will not be moved. Praise be to God. Isn't that wonderful? That is so, so wonderful. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. And we are going to look at verse 32. All right, come on now. Okay. The wicked is banished in his own wickedness. But the righteous has a refuge in his death. Wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding. But what is in the heart of fools is made known. Mm, 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 I tell you. So the scripture said, but the righteous has a refuge in his death. You know, brothers and sisters, this is an amazing word right here. That you and I, have not anything to fear, not even death. Death's power has been broken over you and me. Now, why are we afraid if we don't have to fear death? We don't have to fear the circumstance. We don't have to fear when our car breaks down. We don't have to fear when our bank account goes low. We don't have to fear when our power gets turned off. Hey, I've had that happen to me in the past on many occasions. It is no fun. Praise God, those days are over. But I had to believe for those days to come to an end. You and I can use our faith. Where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow. And praise be to God, the power of death has been broken over you and over me. There is nothing to hold us back because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you might say, Pastor Rob, why are you so assured ass ass of that? I'm assured of that because I know God's promise. I know God's word. I know that I know that I know that I know that God is not a liar. He never sits on his throne and wrings his hands and says, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to help Sister Susie? How am I going to help? Brother Bob, how am I going to help? No, the Lord speaks his word and it stood fast. Learn to trust in the word of God because the word of God is your refuge. The word of God is your strength. And he, the Lord our God, is the saving strength of his anointed. Confess that you're the anointed of the Lord. Speak who you are in Christ Jesus. And like I said earlier, speak the word of God over yourself. The more you hear yourself speak it, you'll begin to believe it and it'll begin to rise up in you. 
You know, I love to hear when people pray the word of God. And when you pray the word of God, your hope and your trust is in him. But if you're always praying out of your feelings and what you see, you never come into that place where you're trusting the Lord. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to our next scripture. We're moving right through these very nicely. All right. Let's go back to Psalm. Psalm 62. Psalm 62. And let's look at verse 7. Psalm 62, verse 7 and verse 8. In God is my salvation and my glory. See, David knew who the Lord was. And he made it very personal. He says, God is mine. He is mine. He belongs to me. He chose me. God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I pray that he's your refuge today. Refuge is a dwelling place of safety. Remember in the days when the Union Army or the Army would go forth in the West, they would build forts, these huge forts with high walls. And they would have all their supplies in there, all their armor, everything that they needed. And praise God, it was a place of protection. It was a refuge. They even had women and children sometimes that were there as well. So it is quite amazing. It truly is that God is our refuge. He is our refuge. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, let's go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to read through the whole thing. And this is a scripture that we often pray. Well, I know I do, and my, my wife, Pam, as well. She prays this over the family we pray it over the church i often pray it over all of you in the church as well if you're going through difficulties and just cover you with this psalm he who dwells in the secret place do you come into the secret place do you desire to be in god's presence he who dwells you habitate in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Don't you love it when it's really hot outside and you walk under a tree and you find shade and you feel that the breeze is cooler underneath because you're in the shade? You're out of direct sunlight and you feel the coolness and you get refreshed while you're underneath the tree. That's what the Lord's presence is like. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, I will speak, I will talk of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely, most, uh, most certainly, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. 
So that covers everything that we're dealing with right now. That covers sickness. It covers de uh, disease. It covers anything that's coming against you. Trust in him. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. See, David refused to be afraid. We need to resist fear. We need to push it off of us. Fear has no place in us. Nor of the arrow that flies in the daytime. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. So every hour of the day we're covered by God. Darkness, light, noontime. We are covered by the Lord. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. I remember when Pam and I came back home from Bible school down in Tennessee and we visited, uh, we were staying with our folks and we went up to Rite Aid up in Parkville. And Pam had walked in the store. And when she walked out, there were these two guys that were started saying some vulgar things to her. And I'm telling you, the spirit of God moved me. I got out of the car and I walked up to those two guys that were a lot bigger than me. Trust me, I've never been a big dude. You know, you all know me. And I told them, you will not speak to my wife like that. And one of them, I remember he held up his fist and said, he said something like, you're this little guy or whatever. And I said, you know what? A thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me because these angels that are standing on either side of me, you come any closer to me and they're going to deal with you. And both of them got this scared look on their face. They're like, uh, I'm sure they saw the angels and they took off running. <laughs> we need to walk in our authority, brothers and sisters. You know, now that was the spirit of God that moved me. I, I, I wasn't led on my own to do that. <laughs> and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. And why? Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. That is where you dwell, in the secret place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling or where you live. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lions and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. This is what the Lord's saying to us, because you have set your love upon him, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name or the power and the authority of my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Isn't that wonderful? I can hear some of you shouting right now. You're getting a revelation. You're getting a revelation. You're getting a revelation. By wisdom and revelation, praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. God is so awesome. All right, let's go to Proverbs. Did I already read this one? No, I haven't. Let's go to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. 
I'm bouncing you all around here today, guys. I think I got the right one here. One second. Proverbs 14, and we're going to look at verse 26. All right, here we go. Proverbs 14, verse 26. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. Wow. The righteous shall be bold as a lion. Amen. We don't have to be afraid, brothers and sisters. There is nothing that you and I have to fear. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children have a place of refuge. Wow. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You and I are called to preach this gospel. Gospel means good news. How lovely are the feet. How lovely are the feet of those that are on the mountaintops preaching good news. God says we have lovely feet. I can tell you the one foot that I have left right now is not beautiful, but in God's eyes, it's beautiful. In his eyes, it is beautiful. Hallelujah. And we're going to turn others away from the snares of death. Praise be to God. God is so faithful, brothers and sisters. He is so faithful. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. This is wonderful. I love this. I love this chapter. I love it. All right. 30, uh, Deuteronomy 33, and we're looking at verse 27. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you. And will say, destroy. Then Israel shall dwell in safety. The fountain of Jacob alone in the land of grain and new wine. His heavens shall also drop dew. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The shield of your help and the sword of your majesty. Your enemies shall submit to you, and you shall tread down their high places. You know what, brothers and sisters? I believe that God is not finished with the United States of America. I believe that the Lord is going to use this nation in a mighty way. And yes, there's great division that's apparent right now. But remember, we need to look to the Lord and to his promise. He is our deliverer. Under his wings shall we take refuge and trust. God is so awesome. He is so, so very awesome. He is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, we're going to go to the last scripture of the day. We're going to jump over to the New Covenant, and we're going to go to Philippians. Remember, go eat popcorn, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Go eat popcorn. I learned that a long, long time ago. It's always stuck in my head. 
Philippians chapter 4. And let me go back a little bit. Let's look at verse 6. Very familiar scripture. But we need to put it into action. Be anxious. Be worried. Be concerned for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication. Supplication is asking the Lord for something. Going before him and asking him for his favor. Asking him to dismiss the evil. By prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. Lord, I worship you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you that you're the saving strength of my life. I thank you, Lord, that you caused me to walk in darkness. And I will not stumble. I thank you, Lord, that you have set me free from every bondage of sin. I thank you, Lord, that you are my great physician. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. And I will look to you. I will look to you forever and ever and ever. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace, the shalom of God, which surpasses all of your natural understanding will be a guard around your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Then he tells us how to think. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, those things that are true, not lies of the enemy. Don't be thinking on the lies of the enemy. Turn your head away from that. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report or good nature, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. These things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. See, that's what we're supposed to reflect as spiritual leaders. You should be able to see it in your spiritual leader. Because if they're not, you know, walking in that, then, you know, eh. That's, that's a scary thought there. And those things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed, 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 blessed be the name of Jesus. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Amen. Well, I said to you earlier that I would pray with those that don't know the Lord. If you've been listening to this message today and the Lord has touched your heart and you would like to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you have to invite him into your life. You know, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not force anything on you that you don't want. If you don't want him, he, he, won't, he won't force his way in. But he's a gentleman. He's good. He's kind. He's righteous. He's merciful. He's long suffering. He will bear with you. Praise God. But I want you to know the Lord. I want you to know the fullness of his salvation. I want you to understand what his saving grace really is. If you would like to be born again by the Spirit of God right now, pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart that you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, 
from your throne and you sent him to earth to be born as a baby, to grow up into a man, to endure all manner of evil and temptations, and yet never once did he submit to it. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart and to forgive me for every sin that I've ever committed, every trespass that I have trespassed against you, every unlawful deed that I've ever committed, I ask you to forgive me. I confess to you, Lord, that I am a sinner. And without you in my life, I cannot enter into the city of God. And you explain in your word, in the book of Revelation, those that are outside of the city of heaven. So Father, welcome me. Welcome me into your presence right now and have your way in my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you'd like to contact me, you can leave a message on our website. And our website address is www.zionfreedomfellowship, F-E-L-L-O-W-H-S-H-I-P dot org or dot o-r-g also there will be a pay count paypal account link in the description area of this video if you'd like to donate to our church please feel free to do so in jesus name Thank you, Lord. I think our camera may have just died, so I apologize for that, folks. You guys have a great day. God bless you.